Warping is a powerful and necessary skill if you want to add lyrics or live recordings to your music. But on top of that, there are some really cool techniques that can be used to come up with some interesting and unique sounds that you otherwise wouldn't come up with. So in this Ableton Live 10 warping tutorial, I'm going to touch on all bases of warping so you can expand your knowledge and grow as a producer. Firstly, I'm going to show you a few quick ways to warp drum loops. Drum loops are easy to warp because they have obvious transients that Ableton can automatically recognize. So first, activate warp mode. Before we start warping anything, it's important to always make sure that the sample is starting on the first downbeat. You can do this by zooming into the very start of the sample, right clicking and select set 1, 1, 1 here. So the fastest way to warp is simply by right clicking and selecting warp from here. Ableton will automatically warp the sample for you, but if the sample doesn't have obvious transients, it can sometimes make mistakes. Another really fun and fast way to warp is by making sure warp is activated and then holding shift and clicking and dragging the sample to the desired length. If you find your sample is snapping to the grid, you can also hold alt to remove grid snap. Now sometimes you'll need to warp things manually to get the right results, like warping a reference track to suit the BPM of my track. When you import large files like songs, Ableton will automatically set warp markers. To turn off this setting, open up the preferences, click on the warp tab and then turn off auto warp long samples. Firstly, enable the metronome, click warp and set your warp start point. Now you can set warp markers on every eight beats by double clicking in this gray bar right next to the downbeat and move them around. This will either shrink or stretch everything in between those two warp markers. I like to do this every 16 or 32 beats across the entire song until it is completely warped. You can also add warp markers to parts you wish to anchor in place, so when moving other warp markers, these will remain anchored. Alright, so now let's check out some of these warp settings. You can easily double the speed of your sample or half the speed of your sample a few times with these two buttons. There is something magical. There is something magical. There is something... You notice the sound change when speeding up and slowing it down. You can change how the warping affects the sample by changing the algorithm. Complex and Complex Pro will keep the sample as close to the original tonality as possible. Complex Pro just has some format controls that allow you to change the tonality manually. About you. Repitch will change the tone of the sample according to the speed, kind of like when recording in slow motion on your phone. Texture, tones and beats can be used to create some really cool and interesting glitchy, flumy effects. Alright, so let's warp a vocal sample to fit into this song I've been working on. First up, you want to move the vocal to where you want it to start playing, and then consolidate the entire block the vocal is in. There is something magic. Then add a warp marker at the first transit to anchor it in place. Now you can start moving the parts around until you find the sweet spot for the vocal. Sometimes you have to completely cut and move parts rather than stretch them with warp markers. So once you find that sweet spot, you can lock the vocal in place by consolidating your vocal using Control J. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below. Or if you want a whole bunch of free stuff, you can visit my website at offthebeat.com.